not gonna lose no more. Hello everyone welcome to Great Ninja. We will show you lots of amazing facts and theories about Naruto and also Boruto. But before enjoying the video, please subscribe into this channel, share this content and also turning on the notification bells. From generation to generation, Team 7 has always been known as the strongest team because it contains great and talented shinobi, especially Team 7 which is under the leadership of Kakashi which consists of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. This is because they are not only strong, but have also succeeded in stopping the Shinobi World War and saving the Shinobi World from destruction, so their name is known as the Savior of the Shinobi World. However, they seem to have gotten a nerf which makes their powers become irrelevant in today's era. Team 7, whose members are known as the strongest Shinobi and Savior of the Shinobi World, has now lost its spotlight. The main factor that influences this is that Naruto and Sasuke have lost their greatest source of power, namely Kurama and Rinnegan, while Sakura does not have much screen time to show the development of her power in the current era. With this factor in mind, if a threat like Ishiki comes to attack Earth again, it is unlikely that the threat can be stopped. Circumstances like this forced Team 7 to look for new powers, and bring back the light they have lost. What if Team 7, consisting of Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura, who had disbanded for a long time, actually returned together as a new team? Not only as a new team in a new era, but they will return with new powers that were never thought of before. This will certainly be an epic moment that will restore the light from the Team 7 that had dimmed before. As people who have been protecting the Shinobi world from destruction, Naruto and Sasuke feel a responsibility to continue protect the world, even though their greatest power has been lost. To find a solution to this, Naruto and Sasuke met and discussed often after Naruto finished with his duties as Hokage. In one of the meetings held by the two of them, Sasuke began to remember about the incident some time ago, where he found an Otsutsuki shrine where there were six circular engravings, and if touched it would bring up the Otsutsuki who had visited Earth. Based on observations made by Sasuke, Otsutsuki who came to Earth must have been in pairs with the exception of Urashiki, for example, Ishiki who came with Kaguya, then Momoshiki who came with Kinshiki. However, of the six circular engravings, two of them have been damaged and cannot be identified at all, which indirectly means that there are two other Otsutsuki that may come to Earth, or are already on Earth and waiting for the right time to appear. All this time Sasuke had never thought about it deeply, because the circular engraving had been broken, and Ishiki had been defeated for good. But only after he lost the Rinnegan and Naruto lost Kurama in his body did Sasuke realize that they had to prepare for the worst case scenario, or at least take preventive action. When Naruto and Sasuke were still discussing this seriously in the Hokage's room, suddenly Amato entered the room which was also followed by Sakura. Amato apologized for the intrusion, because there is something important that he also wants to discuss with Naruto and Sasuke. It is unknown why at that time Sakura came with Amato, but previously Sasuke had asked Amato to read the scroll he had obtained from Kaguya's dimension some time ago. Sasuke asked Amato specifically to encrypt the scroll, because there were some parts that previously couldn't be read by anyone in Konoha. Sasuke believes that Amato can encrypt and read the scroll, as Amato has worked closely with an Otsutsuki, namely Ishiki. As Sasuke expected, Amato managed to do what Sasuke asked, and then began to describe what he encountered in the scroll. The first is about the existence of the Otsutsuki ruler who they usually call as God Otsutsuki, and orders from him are absolute for each Otsutsuki. In this scroll, Kaguya predicted that there would be two other Otsutsuki coming, exactly like what Sasuke had previously theorized when he saw the circular engraving at Otsutsuki Shrine. Especially considering that the previous arrival of Momoshiki and Kinshiki to Earth was because Kaguya and Ishiki never returned from Earth to the planet Otsutsuki. With Momoshiki and Kinshiki not returning to the Otsutsuki planet, sooner or later two other Otsutsuki will soon come to Earth, which will certainly endanger the shinobi world. While the second is about Kaguya's love for Earth, 
which made Naruto and Sasuke quite surprised at that time, considering that in the fourth Shinobi World War Kaguya tried to destroy the Shinobi World to create a new Earth. Regardless of her status as an Otsutsuki, after all Kaguya is a woman who wants love, and she only felt it when Kaguya set foot on Earth. Kaguya falls in love with a human named Tenji, which is the main reason why Kaguya betrayed Ishiki. But Kaguya knew very well that her actions would cause other Otsutsuki to come to Earth, and therefore she prepared various ways to stop the threat. For example, creating hundreds of thousands of white Zetsu troops, to the legacy of inheritance that is expected to be used by humans to stop other Otsutsuki from coming to Earth if at any time Kaguya has been defeated. However, after Kaguya learned of the betrayal of her two sons against her, Kaguya closed the place and hid her whereabouts, which can only be accessed by people who have her chakra. Kaguya herself in the fourth Shinobi World War once said that Naruto and Sasuke who are reincarnations of Ashura and Indra have chakra similar to her two sons, Hagoromo and Hamura. If the two chakras are combined, it will create Kaguya's chakra which allows them to access the relic Kaguya has left behind. The relic was recorded as being in the area of the Land of Ancestors, which upon investigation turned out to be in the middle of the border between the Land of Fire and the Land of Rivers. Hamato said that he knew Naruto and Sasuke were desperate to get their lost powers back, and that this might be their chance to get the power they wanted. Naruto and Sasuke thought that they had no other choice but to go there, but before that Sakura who had been silent for so long finally spoke up, asking her husband and best friend to let her come with them. Seeing that both Naruto and Sasuke were striving so hard to protect their shinobi world, Sakura couldn't help but wanted to fight together like in the past as Team 7. Naruto didn't mind this at all, because they didn't know how dangerous the place would be and they may need a medical ninja to come with them. In the end, it's all up to Sasuke who is Sakura's husband. At first Sasuke wanted to tell Sakura to stay in Konoha waiting for his return and look after Sarada, but after seeing Sakura's strong determination that reminded him of Team 7's past cooperation, Sasuke could only sigh and allow Sakura to come with them, but with condition that Sakura must prioritize her safety above anything else. Sakura agreed with her husband's words with a beaming face, and with this the formation of Team 7 returned to reveal the secret behind Kaguya's legacy. After walking for some time to the place that had been informed by Amato, they finally arrived at a mountain, where they felt that there was a very strong chakra that was familiar there. At that moment Naruto and Sasuke thought of combining their chakra by doing a fist bump, immediately, a path opened from one of the mountain walls. They were sure that this was the place in question, as there were several statues of Otsutsuki like the one Sasuke had found in Kaguya's dimension. When they entered the place, there were particles of light that enveloped their bodies for some time until they finally disappeared. This incident certainly made them confused, moreover they all could feel that there seemed to be something different from their current bodies, as if they had gained a fairly large power. It didn't stop there, there was a voice in the head of each Team 7 member who said that only those with high determination can get the desired strength. In a split second after the voice disappeared, suddenly a wall appeared from the surface separating the three of them. This wall couldn't be destroyed by anything even with Naruto's Rasengan and Sakura's Super Punch. Confused as to what was really going on in this place, the voice returned stating that they all had to succeed in this trial if they wanted to come back alive, because if one of them failed then all of them would fail too. This is a worst case scenario that has never been imagined by all of them before. The situation was made worse when in front of them the creature that had been their nightmare appeared in front of them. Naruto was confronted by Kurama who has became Naruto's biggest regret because Naruto's unable to save his best friend. Sasuke was confronted by Itachi, an older brother that Sasuke loved very much. Meanwhile, Sakura for no apparent reason was confronted by the figure of Kaguya who saw her with a blank stare. It seems that the incident in the fourth Shinobi World War where Sakura felt the greatest horror in her life when she felt a very pressing chakra from Kaguya, had become the trigger for how Kaguya could appear in front of Sakura. In this trial, it's not just about strength, but about how they can all overcome their trauma and regrets in the past. 
At a glance, the enemy in front of them also had a blank stare, as if there was no soul in it, which made them think for a moment that the one before them was just a fake so it wouldn't be as difficult as expected. Unfortunately, that thought will soon change, especially Naruto and Sasuke who experience inner conflicts even though they know what's in front of them is fake. Naruto and Sasuke were indeed able to dodge the various attacks given by the enemy in front of them, but even so, every time they gave an attack, the memory of the person they loved would immediately return to them, which in the end made Naruto and Sasuke shed tears with each attack. Time and time again Naruto and Sasuke gave their best attacks with tears in their eyes, but even so they would always bounce back as before. No matter how many times and how hard Naruto and Sasuke attacked, the enemy in front of them would soon rise again, which made this situation like mentally tormenting Naruto and Sasuke and destroying them from within slowly. While Naruto and Sasuke struggled mentally, Sakura is rendered helpless before Kaguya with all her might as the mother of Chakra. Even though the Kaguya in front of her was just a fake, her strength was no less strong than the real Kaguya so Sakura really couldn't counterattack, and could only defend by activating her Byakugo. So, no matter how badly injured Sakura was, it would recover in an instant thanks to her Byakugo. Surprisingly, even though Sakura's whole body felt excruciating pain from Kaguya's attack, Sakura didn't feel any decrease in the effectiveness of the Byakugo technique, which should slowly fade in strength because Sakura had done a lot of regeneration in her body. From this Sakura thought that the light that previously entered her body and the other Team 7 members might have given some special effects, such as an immortal nature while they were in this place. That's why Sakura was able to activate Byakugo continuously without any side effects, apart from giving her an excruciating pain that she had never felt before. Besides, even though their bodies are immortal in this place, their mentality can still be broken, and that is what Naruto and Sasuke are fighting for. The endless excruciating pain with the immortal body that Sakura felt, and the excruciating mental attack that Naruto and Sasuke felt, were two things far more terrifying than death itself. Both Naruto with his sage Rosenshuriken, as well as Sasuke with his Suzanoo, both of them continuously used their strongest power to destroy their opponent's body, and kept repeating this every time their enemy revived. As for Sakura, she resignedly could only survive by activating her Byakugo, thinking that it was impossible for her to win against the mother of Chakra. Without realizing it, Sakura's Byakugo which was originally black suddenly turned pink like a karma seal, accompanied by the release of large amounts of Chakra from within her body. It seems that the continuous use of Byakugo that has put a very heavy burden on Sakura's body has reached its limit. However, due to the effect of this place which gives Sakura's body immortality, it seems that Sakura has managed to pass this limit so that a new mode, Ultimate Byakugo, appears. With Ultimate Byakugo, the pain all over Sakura's body seemed to be eliminated, and she got an increase in physical abilities tens of times stronger than normal Byakugo. With this, Kaguya was finally hit by a deathly blow from Sakura. With Kaguya defeated, Kurama and Itachi who were faced by Naruto and Sasuke could not get back up, which means that they have successfully passed this trial. It seemed that this trial could be completed when the enemies they faced were defeated simultaneously, and the strong determination to complete this trial using their strongest abilities continuously would awaken new powers from within their bodies. With Naruto successfully defeating Kurama, he gains a portion of Kurama's chakra into his body, allowing Naruto to use pure Baryan mode as a weapon without any side effects such as death to the user. As for Sasuke, he did not get his Rinnegan back, but instead he got a new mode that allows him to manifest Suzanoo into a more flexible and less chakra-consuming form to use it, Suzanoo armor. Although it does not form a new unit and only covers Sasuke's body like an armor, the use of Suzanoo armor allows Sasuke to use Suzanoo's strongest power which is a longbow and arrow coated with electric element chakra, Indra's arrow. Even though it's much smaller in size, its attack power doesn't decrease at all, in fact, the speed is has increased tremendously. Meanwhile, Sakura got the biggest strength boost when compared to the other Team 7 members thanks to her victory from Kaguya. The Byakugo on her forehead disappeared, replaced by the appearance of the Otsutsuki horn and the awakening of the Rinne Sharingan. 
The increase in power experienced by Sakura can be said to be Kaguya's resurrection through Sakura's body, because Sakura basically gets most of the power that Kaguya has, but without losing her consciousness at all. And after the three of them got their respective powers which were believed to be Kaguya's inheritance recorded in the scroll, the wall that bounded them collapsed, and the three then came out of the place, regrouping with the latest transformations they had. Naruto with his Baryan mode which has no side effects, Sasuke with his Suzanoo armor which has super high defense and attack, and Sakura with Kaguya's power. Thus, the three of them as Team 7 promise to protect this shinobi world with this new power. That's the end of Great Ninja Channel video today. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe into this channel. Leave some comments, like and share this video so we can have more people to see this. Thank you and Great Ninja Channel is signing out for today.